Hello and welcome back to this video. This is the fourth part of the series where we will understand what ROS parameters are in ROS2. In this video, we'll build up on what we already did using publishers and subscribers in the previous video where we made a launch file where instead of using a hard-coded value of topic, we will pass this value as a parameter to both the listener node and the talker node so that they can communicate on the same topic without us hard-coding inside the script. Now, what exactly is a parameter in ROS? A parameter is a configuration value of a node. Simply put, parameter values are certain values which are to be sent to the node and then the node consumes this information to do whatever you want. A lot of this is usually used when you don't want to hard code any information or you have a central place in code where you have all information which can be passed to multiple nodes or even one node if you want. For instance, in the previous part of the series, we made a launch file for a talker and a listener node which would publish and subscribe respectively. In that case, we had hard-coded values for topic. This was the talker node where you had hard-coded values for topic. Now, instead of having hard-coded values, what you can do is you can pass this value as a parameter to both the nodes, talker node and listener node. This was a very simple idea of ROS parameters. They are quite powerful and you can do a lot of stuff. I only talked about consuming this information, but you can of course also change values of parameters from the node itself in ROS2. If you don't understand what parameters in ROS2 are, I've added the link to the official guide from ROS2 about parameters. It does a brilliant job in explaining what ROS parameters are, and I think reading that will be better than me explaining everything about ROS parameters. If you already know about parameters in ROS1, there is a change in ROS2. In ROS2, parameter is a property of an individual node. In ROS1, if you remember, you had a parameter server and a ROS master, right? So the parameter server is a central repository in ROS1 where all the parameters are stored and then any node can access that parameter server and read from that. But in ROS2, you don't have a ROS master, you don't have a parameter server. So that means you have to pass parameter values to individual nodes. So that's why I said a parameter is a property of an individual node. Okay, enough talking about parameters. So this is the topic we will pass as a parameter now. The first thing we need to do there is go to our launch file and prepare the parameter to pass to the talker node and the listener node. Let's go to our launch file. This is our launch file. Let's make a constant for this topic which will be a string which decides what the topic name is. So in our case, the topic name will be chatter. Now let's pass this value to both the nodes. This is how you pass parameters to different nodes. A parameter consists of a key, a value and a descriptor. The first part is the key which is our string topic topic. And then the constant topic, which is string chatter in our case, is the value. The third one is a descriptor, which by default can be empty. So it's optional. We are skipping it for now. Okay, so talker node is done. Let's do the same for the listener node. Okay, so we are passing the parameter topic to the listener node as well now. This was about the launch file. The next question is, how do we consume this information in these two nodes? So let's start with the talker node. In ROS2, if you want to use a parameter in any node, you have to declare the parameter first. So this is how we declare the parameter. The key is topic as we wrote even in our launch file. And then this value is the default value of this parameter. If you do not pass any value for this parameter, then the default value is taken, which is Docker underscore topic. But since we are passing this value to the Docker node from our launch file, this default value won't be used. Once you've declared the parameter, you can start using this parameter. So this is how you get the value of the parameter and we convert it to a string value. Now there's only one thing remaining, consumption of this topic name, right? So instead of hard coding the value topic, we use this variable to make our publisher. So we replace this. Okay, so that's all we need to do here. If we are done with the talker node, let's do the same with our listener node. Even here we start with declaring a parameter. In this, the default value is listener underscore topic. And then we get this parameter, so we have our topic name. We can consume this topic name now to make our subscriber. Here as well, we had a hard coded value. We changed this to topic underscore name. Okay, that's it. Now let's build the project. So we have a new terminal in our ROS2 workspace where we are working. Let's source ROS2. Let's build the package now. Now let's source the package. Let's ignore the warning about Noetic because I have Noetic in my bash RC script. So that is coming up. That doesn't change anything. Now in the previous video, we made our launch file, right? And that is what we edited in this video. Let's run these two nodes using our launch file. This is how we run our launch file. So if you see the talker node is publishing and the listener node is receiving, but just to confirm that our parameter works, let's have a new terminal and see the topic names in this run. So we have a new terminal. Let's source Galactic again. Let's source the package. Now let's do ROS2 topic list. 
So we have chatter here. This was set from our launch file, right? This is what we did. So that's how we used parameters for both our listener and talker node, where we had the topic name as the parameter. Now we used parameters for consumption in this example, but you can do a lot more using parameters. In big projects, parameters are essential for all kinds of things. Also, since this was a very simple video, we only used ROS parameters for consumption or for usage of ROS parameters in our nodes. But you can also change the value of these parameters during runtime. And that is something which is also explained in the official documentation of ROS2. But if you don't have clarity over that, please comment and I'll make a video on that as well. Okay, so this was a simple video about ROS2 parameters. There is a lot more to it. And we'll now gradually start moving towards more complicated usage of ROS2, ROS2 nodes for different applications. So stay tuned and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye-bye.